The weird thing about Fomalhaut B isn't its name, but the fact that it doesn't exist. It was first photographed back in 2008 and was a sensation. Scientists believe it to be a massive exoplanet, but it turned out to have low mass and it's falling to pieces of dust at the moment. It acts like a massive dust cloud. Gliese 1214b is quite extraordinary with its steamy environment. Wait, but steam is the result of water evaporation, isn't it? In fact, this hot planet is full of water-like substances. It's definitely hotter than our planet with its 250 to 540 degrees Fahrenheit. It can also be an ocean planet. Still, very little is known about it since it was first discovered only back in 2009. If you ever wondered what it's like to walk on ice and hot coals at the same time, meet Gliese 436b. Being extremely close to its sun, the Neptune-sized exoplanet boasts temperatures hotter than a blazing oven. And yet, it's covered in ice, which burns incessantly. This ice is much denser due to the enormous gravity of the planet, staying solid even under extreme conditions and not melting away. But Gliese seems a nice place with quite mild climate compared to an oven like Caro 7b. Its day-to-day -day temperature is over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Combined with the rocky surface, it presents a kind of underworld landscape. The rocks on the ground bubble and boil, evaporating in the atmosphere, where they cool down and eventually fall back on the surface in a brimstone rain. The saddest thing about Caro 7b is that it might have once been a gas giant whose atmosphere melted away from the heat, leaving only the scorched core. Caro XO 3b is neither as hot as the previous one, nor as cold as many other planets. It's a gas giant similar in size to Jupiter, yet 20 times denser. It makes this exoplanet's gravity weigh down on everything on its surface 50 times more than it would on Earth. Stepping on it would be your ultimate doom, because you'd be immediately crushed by the density of its atmosphere. Tress 2b is a planet where night never ends. And it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here, it's pitch dark and scorching hot. Tress 2b is a gas giant, roughly 1.5 times more massive than Jupiter and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. It may mistakenly seem that Saturn does have an Earthen-friendly environment. Some layers of this giant gas sphere actually have quite nice temperature conditions. If you dive into Saturn, you'll get to a layer with liquid molecules with 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems like Earth. Anyway, it's only one minor layer, and the rest of the planet is freezing cold. So you'll never be able to land on Saturn and be the same human being like you are on Earth. But you can become a sort of snowball there, or an ice crystal. As for Jupiter, you might have already guessed that there's no solid land. This planet is made of hydrogen and helium, so it's another gas sphere you can't walk on. It's a bit different from Saturn, though. You wouldn't dive in Jupiter, you'd rather float on it. This planet is like a giant cloud, and if you ever landed on it, it would be like walking through a super thick fog. The temperatures fluctuate a lot here. It's freezing on the surface. Unlike Saturn, the deeper you dive, the more scorching this gas sphere gets. Oxygen is usually viewed as an element that might bring life to a planet, but this is definitely not the case for Osiris. Scientists were shocked to find oxygen on this planet, or rather around it, because it's eight times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. This extreme distance makes Osiris a living melting pot where anything that could burn will. It's also responsible for a very short orbit of the planet around its star. A year on Osiris is just 3.5 days on Earth. To boot, the atmosphere of the planet is constantly blown and melted away by the heat from its sun. WASP-76b is another weirdly dangerous planet where it rains. No, not wasps. It's so hot out there, over 4,300 degrees Fahrenheit, 
that it vaporizes iron. So it rains iron. It's another gas giant, just like Jupiter. Its extreme proximity to the sun divides the planet in two. One half has a never-ending day, while the other has eternal night. Meet WASP-12b, one of the weirdest and saddest planets out there. The enormous gravity of its star, combined with the planet consisting mostly of gas, result in the star slowly devouring its protege. WASP-12b has already taken the form of an egg, stretched towards its merciless sun and unable to do anything with its condition. In another 10 million years, the planet will inevitably succumb to the voracious star's appetite. No list of the weirdest planets could do without mentioning Venus, the Earth's evil twin. The second planet from the Sun has an atmosphere so thick and full of clouds that its surface is much hotter than that of Mercury, despite being somewhat farther from the Sun. Volcanic eruptions constantly thrash Venus. Its gravity is almost 100 times stronger than ours, and those clouds I mentioned are not made of water, but of sulfuric acid which condenses and rains down on the ground, adding to the inferno. But even if you were brave, or crazy, enough to try to pass through those clouds, you probably couldn't. The winds up there are as strong as some of the most powerful hurricanes back on Earth. One more freezing cold planet is the one I dare not pronounce. Although the host star is not too far away, it's a small and rather cool red dwarf whose light and heat barely even reach the planet. The temperatures out there fall as low as negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit, which is only marginally warmer than absolute zero. The exoplanet is thus dark, gloomy, and covered in eternal ice. Still, if it has a rocky core, it might generate some heat, so there is a chance that deep below the frozen surface, we could build a nice thermal spa hotel for space travelers. The next planet that sounds like a tongue twister is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star. And at first glance, it looks quite pretty. Blue and white swirls making up wondrous patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors actually come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. But the worst thing is that winds reach the speed of 5,400 miles per hour, or almost Mach 7. For comparison, the fastest wind speed on Earth was 254 miles per hour, over 20 times less. Thus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. Here's another name we'll just leave on the screen, thank you. This magnetic rogue planet, let's call it Simp has probably the best auroras in the universe, putting our northern lights to shame. Dimidium, located roughly 50 light years away from our solar system, is a planet hostile to any living thing on many accounts. It's tidally locked to its sun, which means one of its sides is always facing the star, while the other is always turned away. The hot side is heated to over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit perpetually blown over with winds reaching 600 miles per hour. Despite Dimidium being a gas giant, it has a large amount of iron in it, which melts and evaporates in the atmosphere, creating clouds. And when these cool down, they fall on the surface in the infernal rain of molten iron. In the star system of 55 Cancri, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather, the first, because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 Cancri E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava. The other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The planet is always turned to its star with one side. And between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone a thin strip of gloomy nothingness. The system whose name I wouldn't even try to pronounce has three exoplanets, which are all being slowly destroyed by their own star. It happens because that star is not a regular one. It's a pulsar, 
a rapidly spinning core of an exploded star. It creates powerful electromagnetic pulses in several directions while rotating at several thousand times per second. As a result, the planets orbiting this deceased star are slowly being eaten away and will eventually disappear entirely.